Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety using the Eldray tool suite in conjunction with Cadence Tensilica Extensor Explorer. Now, the starting point is of course Extensor Explorer and inside this IDE I've created a number of projects and the one I'm interested in is this Extensor Safe Utilities project. So I've got this set as my project I've got the configuration set to this particular uh, environment here and my target I've added one called LDRay. So let's check we can build this so let's do a rebuild and there we can see it's done the comp compilation and the build was successful. So let's execute this and see what happens. So let's go and debug this and this is going to connect to the simulator in this particular case and there we can see we've got the main and my main is basically calling all the functions that I'm interested in and at the end it's going to exit. So let's run this and there we can see it's executed until this point. Now what I'd like to know is first of all is my code good? Uh, is it compliant to a coding standard? I'd like to see is it good quality? And also, as it executes, I'd like to find out, well, how much of this code have we actually exercised? And if we haven't got 100%, then I might do some unit testing in order to get 100%. Okay, so let's close this down. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my perspective to the LDRay perspective. And what I've already done is I've analyzed the code. And I'm just going to go and redo that. So we're going to perform the uh, static analysis and I've set my coding standard as the MISRA C2012. I could have I wanted have set any other coding standard. I could even create my own coding standard and we have nearly a thousand rules that I could pick and choose from in order to create that particular coding standard. In this case I've done it against the MISRA C2012. So let's see what we've got. So this has now opened up the Eldray Code Violations view and if we scroll down I should be able to double click on a particular violation and it takes me to the appropriate place where that occurs and so ideally I should either correct that or if I can't then I should justify it and a couple of ways in which we could justify that, justify that code. Okay so what I'd also like to see is is this code good quality. So let's go and open a call graph and we'll take a look. So the call graph is going to show us all the functions and we'll see how they're all interconnected. And in the call graph we can put it into various different modes. In this particular case we put it into a mode where we're seeing all the various violations and we can see the function with the most violations is this one here. We could also put this into a mode where we could view metrics that give us an idea of clarity, maintainability or testability. Well, let's take a look at the maintainability and once again I can sort and rapidly find the most complex function and once again it's this function safe sprint f. Everything is green here because <clears throat> I've set the thresholds and none of these have a threshold above or a value above the threshold I've set. Let's take a look at a, a flow graph. So the flow graph is going to give us a graphical representation of that code. And there we can see we have the start of the function and we have all these blocks of statements with branches between the blocks. If I was to click on a particular block over here, we can see the corresponding block over there. And similarly, I can do the same. OK, so what I'd like to be able to do now is to actually execute this code and see, well, what paths have we taken through this code? So to do that, I need to do a, a build using a headless build so I need to close down the extensor explorer. So I'm going to close that down and we're going to come into TB Vision and inside TB Vision I'm going to be able to perform what we call the dynamic analysis. So that's where I'm going to generate an instrument to program. I'm then going to build it using the headless build. I'll then execute it and then finally we'll analyze the results. So this is now instrumenting, instrumenting the source code it's now doing the headless build so we can see that's uh, going ahead okay that's now built it's now executing on the simulator and we've got the results back from the simulator we're now analyzing those results and we're going to be able to see well what coverage have we actually obtained 
So it's just finishing a number of uh, reports and then we're going to be able to go back to our call graph and this time on the call graph we're going to be able to take a view that's going to show us the coverage. So once again we're going to the, the call graph. This is the same call graph as we saw from the IDE earlier and this time I can now put this into a view where we can see the coverage and green is good, red is bad and we can see if we sort that the coverage is not too bad but of course it's not a hundred percent. The function we were looking at was the safe sprintf so once again let's take a look at a flow graph and this time we're going to see the coverage on that flow graph. So green are the paths we've taken and red are the paths we've not taken. So here we can see we've got a block of statements that's not been executed. Why not? Well, it looks like this has never been equal to, to true. So if I wanted to, to get full coverage on this, then I can do the unit testing. So let's go and invoke the next tool in the tool suite, which is tbrun, and this is going to allow us to do unit testing. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a sequence of test cases that I've previously created. So I'm going to go to the sequence menu and open, uh, let's just locate where that was, low level tests, that's the function I'm interested in. So let's open this sequence of test cases and as we can see we have 13 test cases. <clears throat> let's execute this. So it needs to do a little bit more analysis, then it's going to generate a, a harness, it's going to build it, and then once again it's going to execute it on the, the simulator in this particular case. So that's generated the instrument code. Now it's going to perform the, the build. This time we're not using headless build. I'm just using compile and link. And there we can see we executed it on the, the simulator. And most importantly, the tests have passed. So that means with the inputs we got here, we got the expected outputs. So we can see all these various tests are driving us through that code. And what we should also see is we now have increased coverage so previously we can see the coverage we had for this function and now we've actually executed this tests we can see we've now got 100% statement coverage 100% branch decision coverage and also 100% MCDC and if you'd like more information then please don't hesitate to contact us thank you